All right, guys, so let me show you what we're going to be doing in this video, which is to assign multiple prefabs depending on the object that we're tracking. So I'm going to show you a demo that I have from running this on my mobile device. So as you can see, I have a library card and I'm basically moving it around. I have it on my watch. So I have three different images, the library card, my watch, and also the Sam's Club card. And you can see that the title is changing based on the object that I'm holding. I'm also holding the car so that I can do something different. I'm also rotating my riffs so that I can see that getting detected. So everything is working and it's really, really fast and really powerful. So I can assign multiple prefabs depending on the image that I'm tracking. And I'm gonna show you how I did that. So one of the things that I that I started doing was I, I wanted to do something cooler. I wanted to use a 3D model and or even use the TV basically the video that I show you on the previous video and I run out of time so I didn't get to do something cool like that but at the same time I think showing different prefabs and how you can handle that is cool enough so I created three different basically three different prefabs which are the ones that you see in the you know in the video one of them is going to be the air blue the air green air red and these ones were already set up for some of my other demos that I did previously but they are on the resources and prefab so these are the ones that i'm using for this demo i also created a new scene which is called image tracking extended multiple the previous one was called image tracking extended and that one was for handling showing a tv a video of me talking with a robot next to me and then the image tracking scene was one of the initial scenes that I had on the previous example. So this one is basically part three of that and I'm doing multiple multiple prefabs now. So the way that this works is I have an image, image library as well that I have set up. So in addition to the prefabs that I show you, I also have this called multiple image library. I didn't wanna to touch the one that I set up previously because I, I wanted to keep it, you know, as, as solid as I can because I'm gonna, I want you to download it and be able to use it. And in fact, this one right here, I need to remove because that was the watch that I did on a new library. So if you look at this and you look at the multiple image library, I have three different images. One is gonna be my library card. The other one is gonna be my Sam's Club card. And lastly, it's gonna be basically the home screen that I have on my watch. And each of these ones, what's important here is we need to name these. And this is just how I set it up we could modify the code if we wanted to and have more of a friendly name and also an image name. But I think for now, for simplicity, we're basically, I'm basically tying the image name to the prefab. And based on that image name, I know which prefab to activate. So you can see that this one is gonna activate the AR blue, which then goes into my resources, prefabs, and then instantiates that object. And if we go back into my image library, you can see that AR green, it's going to instantiate the AR green. AR red is going to instantiate the AR red. And basically the, the instantiation of these subjects happens when I start the game. I don't do it at runtime, I do it at the very beginning and then I, I change the location and also I set the prefab to active as soon as I detect the image. So that's going to be the second step. So first step is gonna be the prefab setup. Second step is going to be making sure that you you have created a, an image library. These are the ones that I have in there by default. If you want to create one from scratch, you can right click in this area, go into create and then XR and you can create a reference Im image library yourself and then associate the images that you have. So, or you can just clone the one that I created and then you can modify it. So the next thing that you'll need to do is, of course, you're gonna need an AR session, an AR input manager. That's something that I already had in the previous example, so just I just wanted to mention it because you're gonna need it. And then I'm also gonna need, just like I do in every single video, I know that I'm repetitive when it comes to this, but I wanna mention it because I get a lot of people asking me about why things are not working. These are core components, so make sure that you have the AR session origin and also the camera associated with it. And I also need, because we're tracking images, we're gonna need a core component from AR Foundation, which is called the AR Track Image Manager. This is the one that is gonna have a reference to the image library that I show you here. 
These are called reference image libraries, so I basically rename it, rename it, but you have to add a reference here for that. And then you also have to specify the max number of moving, basically moving parts. And then this normally is set to a prefab and, and that works if you want just one prefab to, to be associated with this image library. But I wanted to experiment and do a little more than that because not all the time you want to use one image for or multiple images for one prefab. What I wanted to do is I wanted to use you know one image and tie that image to a prefab. So I had to do a little bit more coding, but it wasn't that bad. And the way that that is set up is by I created a, a an array of game objects where I'm assigning where I'm assigning all the prefabs that I'm going to be using in the in the experience. So you can see that this is an object an array of size three. I have the AR blue, AR green, and AR red. And then I also have a scale factor because the spheres are way too big. So for, as a rule of thumb, I'm always starting at about a tenth of the scale size, which is why I have 0.1 on X, Y, and Z. So that's basically everything. And then for the most part, it's just what I did in the previous video, a welcome panel, and then also the image track text, which is going to display the name of the image that it has been detected. Now let's go into the code and I can show you how the code works. So I'm just gonna minimize it here. So this is basically boilerplate. I already show you this welcome panel, this means button, image tracking text so that we can basically have that information in the UI. This is really important because it's an array that we're gonna use to create our dictionary. And what I do is I, I fill in the dictionary based on the game objects that I associate. These are all the prefabs that I associate. We could even rename these to be prefabs, but just know that if you have prefabs in the scene that you want to type with the reference image library, make sure that you do that and then you associate those with the game object array. Once you have those associated, the dictionary is going to be populated automatically for you. This one is going to be the scale factor that we're going to be using to apply to the game object that gets instantiated. And then I also have an AR track image manager because we need to detect some of the events when an image gets added and detected and when, it, when an image gets updated, we need to track those two events. And then I have a dictionary which I'm using. The key is going to be the name of the image and the game object is going to be the game object that we are instantiating. These are prefabs. These are going to be instances in memory that are running that we're going to be changing the position and also the scale. So. The awake is just boilerplate, this means button, and I'm basically calling that this means event. And then I'm attaching the AR image manager, just like I've done in multiple videos. If you haven't watched the previous videos, make sure that you watch the AR foundation videos playlist that I have, because I go into a lot of different examples of how to use this. And then what I do in here in the awake is I go through each one of the prefabs that I have associated with the array, and then I loop through. As soon as I loop through, I instantiate a new object of that type and I set it as zero, basically vector three that's zero, and the and then also the rotation that identity. And I say rotation because I can't really pronounce this word and I'm not gonna try guys because I'm not gonna say it right. So just know that that's going to be that and then that identity, just don't make fun of me because I don't know how to pronounce that word. And you can give me a hard time in the comments. I, I will have a good laugh. And then the other thing that I'm doing, and I'm, all, I'm also associating the name that I have from the prefab to the name of the new object. Because if I don't do this, it's going to call it something like clone. And if it has the word clone in it, it's not going to find that image in the image library. And therefore, it's not going to know which image in which prefab in the dictionary it needs to be modified. And then I just basically add it to the dictionary. Then the other things that I do is on enable, I add a new binding to the track images change. This is exactly what I did on the previous video. And then on destroy, on disable, I unbind from that event. I already show you this on the previous video, so I'm not going to talk about that. And then what I'm doing in here and basically capturing when the images get detected, when we add an image, this is the method that is going to be called. When we update an image, this is the method that's going to be called. And then when we remove an image, what I do, I go into the dictionary, I look the game object by name, and then I basically set it to inactive so that we don't show that 
when the image that was visible at some point was removed. So that happens when I'm showing, so if I go ahead and pull the, let me go ahead and pull that so I can show you some of those events. So if I, right here, the, the edit, so as soon as I see the, the guard coming in, so about right here, the method edit, it's going to be call, which is going to be, which is going to be this one right here. As soon as I move the car, this is the one that is gonna be called. And then as soon as I remove the, the car library from the scene, this one is gonna be called. So that's how we can track which, which events are getting tracked. And then based on which events, these two are basically doing the same as far as like what I'm calling. But this one, it's just removing the game up, not removing the game object, but making the game object invisible so that we don't see it in the game scene. And then the next method that I want to show you is the update our image. I'm passing the AR track image, which we're getting from or from the event that got called. And then because we're looping through, then I pass that into this method. I get the name of the reference image, which in our case is going to be the AR blue, AR red, or the AR, I guess it was, I think it was the AR yellow. And then as soon as I get that, I set the text, which you see on the canvas. Then I also assign and place a game object. So I pass in the name of the reference image, also the position of the track image so that I know where to place the sphere. And then I just have some login because I wanted to make sure this was gonna work. And then as soon as I call the assign game object, I pass in you know the reference image that I told you here. I also pass in the position that I need to place the sphere to. Then I also make sure that the array was initialized. So I say, okay, air objects to place does not equal null then I know which image needs to be active. So I go to my dictionary, I pass in the key name, I set it to active. I also pull the position, also the location based on the, the position is gonna be based on the track image transfer position that I'm passing in. The scale factor is gonna be the scale factor that I specify in the inspector. I told you this was gonna be a one tenth of the, of the factor that I have the prefab to be. And that's because just to make sure that it's no it's not gi gigantic it's a smaller it's going to fit well on the card okay so that's what i do i change the position the scale factor and then we could probably change this to be something like if you wanted to be you know to keep it a little cleaner you can say ar object or you can say geo ar object so that we don't do this thing multiple times and then we can just do this this should work as well and then, yep, and then so I change the position, the scale factor, and then I know which object I need to set because this is the one that is getting tracked. And then what I do, I loop through every single one of the other values that I have in the dictionary, as long as the name is not equal to the name. So this tells me that the, the other objects that are in the dictionary are not the ones that are basically in the view right now. So I set them to inactive, and then otherwise I set it to active. So. This is a toggle between you know the one that is currently active and then basically setting the other ones to inactive so that we don't see it. So that's basically everything that I wanted to show you guys in this video. And if you guys have any questions about what I just showed you, please let me know in the comments. And again, don't forget to subscribe to the channel because that really helps me in bringing you a lot more content. And also keep in mind that I'm submitting this to GitHub so that you can download it at your convenience time and also try it out on your device. Thank you guys.